There's been an idea floating around for quite a while regarding Nintendo's latest home and handheld console. And some of the base of it open three sentences. 1. The Switch is a portable console with a 720p compact built-in display. 2. Both its controllers have gyro sensors and accelerometers and so does the display itself. The Joy-Cons can also know how far they are from one another and have very high precision if implemented well. 3. The Nintendo Switch costs 300 US dollars at its suggested retail price. Simple math can get anyone to the conclusion at the title of the video, but here it is in one sentence. Nintendo can at any point in the Switch's lifetime release, at its simplest, a Google Cardboard like head mount for the base console and start adding VR support to games since their controls seem perfectly designed for this kind of idea and already have stuff like immersive HD rumble, incredibly accurate gyro and a ton of other tiny details like that. With its base $300 price tag and a probably low cost for the simple head mount add-on, under 100 bucks for sure, it's gonna be the most affordable, fully functional, dedicated VR experience consumers can have nowadays. Because those $300 aren't for the VR headset only, it's also for the machine that runs all those games and also plays other fantastic games. Whether or not you like Nintendo, this idea is probably sounding delicious to you too. But what's the holdup? Why isn't this out? Why aren't consumers rushing to store to get their ultimate next-gen immersive system already? Well, let's start with that exactly. People are rushing to get these anyway. Nintendo weren't ready, but I don't mean they actually weren't ready, just calculated in how poorly the Wii U did when deciding the stock they would make in advance for the Switch. That's totally fair, and remember in E3... They were in fear releasing this console, this company couldn't take any risks with its new system, and to be honest, they sure enough didn't. The price is perfect for a gameplay gimmicking glass console, Aside from maybe upping the price tag a tad bit with all the Joy-Con features, and devs didn't have to cripple their games under Nintendo's limits anymore. But here's the thing. I severely doubt that Nintendo were the only people online who didn't think of VR. If this does end up being a thing, it's probably already a thing in Nintendo's offices, but they're terrified of making this console any more of a gimmick than some people who are wrong by the way are already calling it and they're almost at the point where they're hiding some features that outlaw the Wii U. Look at Mario Kart 8 Deluxe for example. I found out this game has full touch utility in the menu by accident, and it was nice and I think it's good, but it's very odd that this feature isn't mentioned in any way by Nintendo. That's why Captain Toad won't make it to the Switch anytime soon sadly. They don't want anyone to think this is a gimmicky gaming tablet. They need at least two years for this console to settle as the normal everyday thing it's designed to be. And only then, when everyone in the world is aware the Switch is alive and well, they can drop a massive E3 2020 bomb where the entire Nintendo booth is a VR showcase, featuring Metroid Prime 4, ARMS and Captain Toad, all playable in VR. Okay, that was a joke, but seriously, making everyone who owns the Switch suddenly become 50 bucks away from a full VR console they can put in their pocket. Now, you're playing with power! That's actually the coolest thing about Switch VR. Look at any video about VR heads in their current state, and you get this. Plug in the adapter, plug in the 3D driver. We're just stuck with cable clutter, right? Ah! Install an additional power outlet. It's just... It's a big mess of cables if you leave it hooked up all the time. I'm still plugging stuff in! The Switch works seamlessly without any wires and it's instant. If they make activating VR mode or whatever snappy, it's gonna be the dream futuristic experience. Just getting home, sitting down and just quickly immersing yourself in a game. All they need is to remember most gamers rather have speedy chair support rather than play standing up. And they have gold on their hands. But th there are obviously issues. The one issue I hear floating around recently is that 720p on the Switch is too low for VR. I haven't used the dedicated VR headset with a critical mind in my life. I, I, I tried an Oculus once four years ago. Nothing important. So I can't exactly know how good, for example, the Vive or PSVR is in this department with their displays. So uh, yeah, just felt like it 
really need to add that fact to the discussion, I'd like some personally experienced fonts in the comments. Is 720p an acceptable consumer grade resolution VR? Tell me down there. Another thing that was actually brought up by Nintendo themselves, um, after doing some research for this video, was back in 2015 when the Switch was only the mysterious NX Dream, Reggie himself was asked about what is Nintendo doing in response to most other hardware companies testing VR, and his response was this. We have knowledge of the technical space, whatever that means, and we've been experimenting with this for a long time. We believe that in order for this technology to move forward, you need to make it fun and you need to make it social. Then in 2016, during a shareholder meeting in Japan, Business Insider reported that Miyamoto himself stated that Nintendo is indeed researching VR. But the biggest problem was that long play sessions became less fun over time. A similar statement was made recently by President Kimishima himself that if we are able to resolve the issues with playing in virtual reality comfortably for long hours, we will support it in one form or another. That line regarding making VR social by Reggie is a bit weird to me, I don't think VR is a platform that really needs any social aspect, if anything it's always been portrayed as the ultimate escape from reality. VR second life isn't something I'm interested in. But regarding fun I totally see the point. Swinging your hand to throw your head in Mario is fun. Twisting your entire wrist in order to just move in arms is not fun. Controlling your entire character by spinning in a chair. Why bother? They need time to finalize this kind of product because from what I've been seeing, VR needs at least 20, 30 more good finished video games before I personally will accept it as anything more than an immersive tech demo catalog. Nintendo should be aware that the eShop can't be riddled with trashy half ass demos like Steam is. And I really hope they get some serious, normal, quality assurance teams for this. So uh, those are my thoughts on why VR is important for the Switch, and why it's really unlikely that it will actually release in the close two years. And we, we really shouldn't be pushing Nintendo on this. They still have Smash to give us in 2019, you know? Anyway, that's, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Books out. Peace.